In this unit, I'm going to emphasize time. Now, previously I talked about planning, getting things ready, having enough time. But now what I'm going to talk about is your video length. And when I say length, from the beginning to the end, how much time is it? Think about this for a moment. Think about a movie you watched recently. Very often movies tell a story about a person's life or something that happened to a superhero or some aliens from outer space or just a regular person. Lots of times the story goes over days, months, years, even centuries or eons. So the amount of time being represented can be very large. That's all presented in a very short space in the movie theater, which is like, what, 90 minutes, 120 minutes, two hours, usually is maximum. So think about that for a moment. A lot of time being compressed into a very small time in the movie, and does it really bother you? No, I think it's easy for us to understand. We're used to this when we watch the movie. That time passes, jumps across time, things happen. What's happening there though is the filmmaker is compressing that story down. That filmmaker, he or she's not telling you every little detail, right? Think about when you're watching a movie and you begin to feel bored. What parts of a movie do you often feel bored during? Is it when people are talking, talking, and they're telling all the details and explaining things? Why don't you try an experiment and go on the YouTube and watch some videos and count how many seconds before you begin to get bored. I would say that you get bored quickly when the video is doing too much explaining. Like me right now, you're probably very bored. The longer something ex is explained, the longer that time takes, the more bored the audience becomes. And they just switch off. Like I said, today, everyone is easy to pick up their phone and be distracted. So a video really needs to be short. Now, this may be opposite of what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, I'm gonna make a video and I wanna make it explain everything, so I'm gonna make a 20 minute video or a 30 minute video. And what I'm telling you is, when I say short, I mean really short. In the class that we're doing now, later I'm gonna go over some student projects. And those projects were two possible times. One minute or half a minute. 60 seconds or 30 seconds. That was the time they had to tell their story. That was the time they had to make the video from beginning to end to present that. 60 seconds or 30 seconds. Now I picked 60 or 30 because it fits the commercial format for advertisers where they have 30 or 60 minute blocks. Now of course on YouTube advertisements can be different time lengths, it's not limited. But these to me seem like good lengths of time. It's really amazing how much you can tell in 60 seconds and even just 30 seconds. We're going to look at examples of that later. But remember, you want to keep it short. It doesn't help to tell a long story. It doesn't help to explain more. Your audience will actually learn less because you lose their attention. Now, one thing I want to point out is Often when we write reports or book reports or research papers or we have to do a project for school, often we think, hey, longer is better. The teacher will see more pages. That's more impressive. But we know that in actuality, you're just filling up the space. Now, in a paper, people can just turn the page and skip through it. But in a video, people cannot really skip through it. They're stuck watching it. Of course, they can go forward, can't they? But you know what they're going to do? They're just going to skip the whole thing and go to watch another video because there's so many other things they can do. So you have many competing factors, other videos, especially if the person is watching your video on YouTube, or if they're listening or watching your video in a conference room, in a presentation, they can still pick up their phone and go onto the internet or they can talk to someone or as my students do, just fall asleep. So 
that competition, you need to think, I must be more interesting. I must be better than that competition. And how do you get better? By staying very, very short. Now, one would think making a short video, well, making a long video is hard. Don't, shouldn't we do the hard thing? And I think the lesson I've learned over the years is longer video is way easier than making a short video. Making a short video is really challenging. So making it short is actually much harder. You need to plan more. You cannot just turn on your camera and shoot a bunch of video because that's gonna cause you trouble later when you need to edit it and remove the stuff you don't want. Or it's just gonna be this whole huge chunk which is gonna bore people. So you need to make a plan. So previously we talked about getting ready beforehand. You need to take time. This is part of that time. Planning to make your video short will actually make your work more efficient in the end. Also, you'll end up spending less time and less money wasting time. And I think the biggest thing I've seen with young people, with my students, is if they're trying to make a short video, 30 seconds, they're much less likely to get frustrated and give up. I've seen many students go to make a video and they don't have a time limit, so they're thinking maybe five minutes, 10 minutes. And what ends up happening is, after they get filming a bit in a couple days, they get tired out, they get frustrated. And then they take this footage back and they put it on the computer and it's like, oh my God, I gotta edit this. It's, it's out of control so much, I'm tired out. It's easy to underestimate the huge amount of work you need. So for every minute of video, you need many, many hours of work. Shooting the video, preparing the video, editing the video, etc. So plan for the short. The plan will help you achieve short and the short will save you time and money and stop you from getting burned out, tired out, and giving up. Of course, you also save money, don't you? Because you don't need to spend all that money and all that time. Time is money, right? Even if you're a student, your time must be valuable in some ways. And the biggest problem I think students have when they work in groups is arranging schedules, right? Getting people together. So isn't it better that you can get together just two or three times rather than you need to get together five or six times? Believe me, that'll always end up getting messed up when somebody calls at the last minute and they can't make it. So this is a general rule of thumb that I've told my students. That if you're gonna make a video, shoot for 30 seconds or one minute and that will help you to really concentrate and focus. Here's a little exercise you can do on your own. Remember last time we were looking at the three pictures for the story? Well, why don't you just go ahead and find some pictures or draw some pictures by hand, put three together, and see if you can tell a little story. And then think in your brain, could I make a video that matches these three, three pictures and the video lasts just 30 seconds? I think that would make you understand a little bit better that yes, it is possible to make a very short video, for example, 30 seconds or less. Okay, now let's jump over to the hardware table. Okay, here I am at the hardware table, and what hardware am I gonna look at today? Well, let me see, I got a bunch of stuff here. We're gonna look at microphones. Remember we talked about video and sound. Those are the two parts of a video, basically, your image and your sound. And I can tell you 100% the most important part is not the video, it's the sound. Where does the sound come from? It comes from the microphone, of course. And I want you to just think for a moment about some television you've watched. And when I say television, I mean, think about a variety show where people talk or they sing a song and they have a contest maybe, or maybe they have some guests and the guests they can talk back and forth. When you see that, do you notice they're holding a microphone? That TV production is making a lot of revenue. They have a lot of money involved in that. If there was a better way to do this without a microphone, they would do it. There's really not a better way. So a microphone is the really best way to make your sound clear. I'm not talking about the microphone that's on the camera. This microphone here is really completely useless. That's this mic right here. This has a microphone. That's built on built in. Even your digital cameras have 
little microphones, don't they? Where's this microphone? It's right up here. Wow, okay, horrible, terrible, terrible. Woo, that's gonna be very, very bad. So, the microphone that's on the camera, there's no way you should ever, ever, never, never use it. You must have a microphone that's external or an external mic. Now let's go over some kinds of mics that you can use. Now I showed you this one here, which you're probably very familiar with. You've seen something like this when you've used KTV. Maybe at home your parents or you have a KTV machine and it has a little microphone like this. We don't need to go into the details, but of course a microphone like this has to have a cord and then you have to get the sound into your camera. That camera may be an SLR camera, it may be a phone, an iPhone, and you need to use an adapter. Easy to get the adapters. It's all possible. Now there are two basic kinds of microphones, ones that need extra power and ones that don't need extra power. So pay attention because sometimes you may be wondering, why does this microphone have no sound? And maybe because it needs a battery for power. But you can check that out on the internet to get more detail. So this is your basic kind of microphone you can hold. Now that's going to work fine and as long as the person holds it close to their mouth. And that's a key point. Closer is better. Farther away is worse. Closer is always better. But what if your video is trying to tell a story and it's really strange for the actor, the person inside your video to be holding a microphone or maybe you're videotaping real people in real life. You cannot stop everyone and say, oh, excuse me man, could you hold this microphone while I film you? Uh, excuse me sir, could you tell your son to hold this microphone so I can take a videotape of him? Now that's not going to work out too good. So what we have instead are shotgun microphones. This is a little tiny one, a good, a good example of a small one. And these microphones can get a good sound from a bit more distance, but you need to be pointing directly at the source of the sound. Again, when you get closer, it's always gonna be better than compared to far away. I could use this microphone this close. It might be a little bit too hot, a little bit too close, like this would still work fine. Usually when you watch a TV production, that is people are acting, there will be somebody holding a pole and they'll be holding that mic right up above the camera edge. In fact, sometimes when you're watching a movie or video, you can see the microphone come down just a little bit. That's how close they're always trying to get it. Now you could put this on the top of your camera and in fact, you can buy add-ons to your SLR camera that can look something like this. So here I have my my camera and there's an attachment where this can go onto the top and then I could actually use the shotgun this way. And this would be a good way to capture the sound. Now I do need to get this XLR cable into my camera but I have an XLR to mini jack, one eight inch jack and so I can just plug that in to the jack in there and that'll work. So when you're on YouTube sometimes you can see some people using this as a very common setup and I think it's very effective. One more thing you could do is like what I'm using right now which is called a tie clip microphone because it goes onto the tie like this or onto your shirt and they're easy to hide and not not so obvious and they get close to the person who's speaking. The problem is it's hard to put this onto a person's shirt and then you have a long wire going back to the camera. Okay, that's really what you need to do, attach it to the camera. So one solution to that is you can get these kinds of transmitters and that is a transmitter and a receiver and they will send the signal wirelessly through the air but you do need to have batteries and you need to have a matching set. Now this is a real cheap set I got at an electronics store if you're in Japan, Taiwan, China, this stuff is very cheap and you can get this easily. They don't work great, I have to say that. They're not like the greatest thing ever, but you can get the sound from a person clearly from a distance. Not super far, but the signal can travel maybe uh, uh, 10 meters without a problem and you don't have to have a wire. You do need to monitor the sound and that is important. That means that while the sound is coming in, you need to use some earphones to make sure the sound is clear. 
Now you can put the earphones into this receiver or on your camera. Remember we have this hook up here. You may also be able to have a jack for your earphones and you can listen to the sound and make sure it's clear. Otherwise you're gonna end up recording and then when you're all done, you go home, you turn on the recording and there's no sound. You have no sound, you have no way to know. Okay, so those are some of the mics we have and we've learned a few things. You need to carry all of your adapters. Remember the adapters from our first lesson, right? All of these adapters because you need to plug things together, get the wires together and get it all into the camera. But once you've got that down, I think that you can get okay sound. The way to get good sound though, remember is mic close. Closer mic is better, always better. Or shotgun mic as close as you can get, but just outside of the frame, you see? Just outside the frame and you can get very good sound without people even seeing your microphone. So good luck with your mics.